Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, not yet. You're going to get everybody excited. Well, it's too late for that. You already got it. You got everybody riled up, Big Joe. We are going to check the hoss herd and make sure they're behaving. If you saw our last video, um, we had some oops, is what my papa Coke used to say, because somebody let them out. Kind of the worst nightmare of being a bison owner and rancher. Marissa and I have been doing a lot of fence work and in some uncomfortable situations, needless to say. Snakes, creeks, rough terrain, you name it. We've been in it. But we can't find the hoss herd right now, so um, we still got to find them. Marissa and I came out here yesterday and we did a herd check in the morning. This is the first time that one of our originals, which is Bell Star, had a calf. We had a DNA test done on her. I did Dunbar and Big Joe. I pulled hair on them. And what happened was it came back as, oh, it's Bell Star's baby. So we've kept her. She is a Dunbar baby. Dunbar and Bell Star, part of my original five. This heifer, the 082, was bred by. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Thunders Bison. Welcome back to the channel. I think we got some new babies. Let's go check them out. Big Joe. Hey, big boy. Mama's. That's 54, the jumper. There's the jumper. 54 and 11. Okay, these were the first two born here, so nothing's different here. But we, oh man. Um, okay. Mama. Well, one of these is hers. There's not twins over there, I promise. A lot of people ask about twins. Uh, oh, she's pretty vocal today. Yeah, she is. A lot of people ask about twins. Bison can have twins. However, it's very, very, very rare. And looky here, looky here. Man, you sneak up on me. It's a big boy to be sneaky like that. Oh, he smells something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, not yet. You're gonna get everybody excited. Hey, not yet. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Well, it's too late for that. Every, you got everybody riled up, Big Joe. Everybody. Even the little guys. Yeah, we can we can feed. Yeah. Before Big Joe comes and gets me. So I know this herd looks a lot bigger because it is, but it's really not that bigger. The reason these calves are out here is because somebody let them out. That's all I'm gonna say. So that's where we have a hard time gate cutting them to get them back up. They're like, I'm gonna be out here. They wanna hang out with the herd. They wanna be big kids and you know, they wanna graze. We have plenty of grass up in the corral in the trap area where court is. And I like to keep them up there and let them graze that and keep them separated. But because somebody let them out, they're out here now and it's really not hurting anything. They're sharing the grass and that's okay. It's growing like crazy right now because of the moisture we keep getting and of course the beautiful weather and temperatures. So look at the new one here. They do a lot of resting when they're first born. So fun to watch them. And it looks like, where are those other two at, hon? There's one red dog right there. There's two.
Yeah, one, two. Oh, there's there's the newest one right there. All right, so there she is. Okay, so something fun happened. Um, and who this is, we thought we noticed this yesterday. So there's three and four. So we've got four red dogs right now. I'm trying to be careful here. Peaches is getting really close. Peaches is an original. There's one right there. So the newest one, they're all spread out right now because they're eating cubes. I had to get them off of Marissa and I. They're getting kind of close. Yeah. I wonder if he has that other bowl of genetics. Yeah. Didn't do a very good job of watching. Look who's sneaking up behind me. Peaches on this side. Joe, I'll give you some more cubes. It's been a long time since we've actually been given them cubes. They've been chasing this green grass so so quick. Oh, look at her. from Broken Arrow Bison. Oh, there's there's uh, Nora right there. Here's Nora. Hey! Look at there, little Nora. Yeah, you're kind of looking at her horn. She got her horn damaged um, somehow at the Mom and Kevin's original place. I'm not sure what happened, but... So, yep, little Nora's going to have a funky horn just like her mama. Looks just like her. And her mannerisms. Yeah, her mannerisms definitely are a lot alike. Big Joe, he just keeps coming for more. Hey, back up, dude. Peaches. So what we did is uh, Marissa and I came out here yesterday and we did a herd check in the morning and we only had three babies. And then what we did was we came back in the evening and we glanced down here and we thought we had four. And the mom was showing no signs. But here's what's interesting about this calf right over here. Eh, kind of back in the back here. Is this is the first time that... One of our originals, which is Bell Star, had a calf. She's one of our first uh, productions, one of our first calves. She had a calf, and I did a DNA test on her. I pulled her hair because I knew we were going to keep her because we were trying to grow the herd. We had a DNA test done on her with some others. That's when I did Dunbar and Big Joe. I pulled hair on them. And what happened was it came back in this 082 heifer, her mom is Bell Star. And so the only reason we knew that is because we pulled hair on them several, several years ago and sent it to UC Davis, a part of the uh, North American Bison Registry, and it came back as, oh, it's Bell Star's baby. So we've kept her. She is a Dunbar baby, Dunbar and Bell Star, part of my original five. This heifer, the 082, was bred by Big Joe. She's been here for ever since we got this place, the Ponderosa. She's been out here with him, basically. And so you've got a Dunbar heifer and then a big a Joe calf. A lot of people ask, can you breed back? You can breed back. But what we do is we try to move them around. We try to switch our heifers up so that they're never with the, the same bull. And so she's one of the very first ones to have a calf from our original five. And so that's the first time that's happened.
first time I had to get on this side of the fence, it was getting kind of a little, a little pressured in there. Everybody's wanting some cubes and they're fighting off cubes. So anyways, uh, we are going to check the escapees that are back at the ranch. Yes, of course. If you saw our last video, um, we had some oops is what my pop off Coke used to say. You had an oops and we did have an oops. Uh, luckily everything went good and we got them all back in and, um, these guys are doing good. We're check them daily. Every day we're checking for new babies and making sure they're good. So right now we've got 54 cow, which is the jumper. We've got a Texas 11. This is her first time at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. We rescued them in 2021 and 54 and 11. And then we have one of our own, 082. She's had her first baby. That's one I talked about earlier. She's an original. And the other one is a Peter Cole mama. And she is a first timer as well. So we have two first timers ever because they're young mamas. They're only like two or three years old. And uh, the Peter Cole one is from Peter Cole, which is from Missouri, a good uh, bison friend of ours. Okay, we are going to check the hoss herd and uh, make sure they're behaving. And because Marissa and I have been doing a lot of fence work and in some uncomfortable situations, needless to say, snakes, creeks, rough terrain, you name it. We've been in it. And um, it's what you got to do whenever, uh, you know, your herd gets out. So let's go check. Creek's way up. Where she's going in. It washed up, yeah. It washed a bunch of stuff away. So this is the creek. It's actually up quite a bit. It's a good thing we came down here and checked it. This is the creek where they got out. And we've had a lot of rain here in the past, I don't know, 16 hours or so, maybe a little bit more. And uh, this creek is the highest I've seen it. I mean, not that we've had this land for very long, but, you know, since October of 21, I've never seen it this hot. But the other thing is, yeah, it, it's going pretty good from the rainfall. But the other thing is... We've never had our bison back here. You know, obviously we spent a lot of time here recently because um, I missed the spot basically. And uh, they found a way out and it's my fault because I have, we've never really dealt with creek crossings and this riparian area. And because of, even before the bison got out, we've already been uh, talking to some specialists basically that protect riparian zones. So we're working with them on protecting some of these riparian zones uh, just from a damage of erosion from the animals. Uh, goats, sheep, cattle, uh, donkeys, horses can all damage these sort of banks right here and cause them to widen and erode over time. So um, something new, All we're learning all this um, about protecting these riparian zones. Uh, the creek is awesome. It's one of our favorite things about this place. We also got to protect it. Now that the bison are back here on this land, uh, this 80 acres. So that's something we're looking into. And then also is whenever your bison get out at a creek, you obviously have to pay attention to it. So here we are. So I know some of y'all are looking at this going dusty. That ain't going to work. And yes, you're right. This is a temporary fix. These bison are all going to be in this pasture for about I don't know, maybe two months, maybe not even that. This is to get us by, and we come and check it quite a bit, especially when it rains. That's why we drove down here. We're gonna have to check it quite a bit to make sure, but these panels, we raise them up high enough so water could flow underneath them. Debris could get, you know, sort of underneath them. It's catching some stuff right now, but this creek is not huge, but like, I, like we said, this is the highest we've ever seen it. So it's good to come and check the crossing. Um, but it definitely needs some heavy duty stuff across here eventually. And we'll eventually do that. Whenever the bison aren't in here, we'll be able to tear all this down and actually start over and actually build some stuff across here where, um, it swings. There's lots, lots of stuff you could do, um, for these Creek crossings. So we'll do that 
eventually probably when the bison get out, we still got a lot of things work to do. But we can't find the hoss herd right now, so um, we still got to find them. Yeah. yeah now that you know, we you let your bison out on the biggest pasture you have, this 80 acres. Um, sometimes they're hard to find, especially when you have a creek that runs through there. And with the creek is the tree line and the tree line can border, you know, and c cover everything. So you can't see pasture to pasture like you normally could in one big wide open space. So we've had a hard time finding them here and there. So come on, Jackie. And Jackie's been roaming with us in the pastures for herd checks here lately. I don't know why, but she has been so. You look funny wet. Well, we found one. They must be hiding in the woods. I hear something rustling there to crack the back behind you. No, it sounds like they're right back there. Oh, I hear them. To the just to the just to the set. Who comes out of the woods? Oh, there's number two. They're all just laid up, I guess. Come on. Where's everybody at? This is no. maybe it. It's across the creek. guys to see how tall this stuff is I mean it's all up to my this area some of it is crazy how tall some of this stuff is it's awesome after the shenanigans we had I think it's important to give them cubes even yeah. if they're out here here they come running. Here. They've been hanging out in the woods. Yep, I know we were super lucky to get those animals back in and this is a perfect example of why we use cubes. Um, whenever they got out, uh, well, it's kind of funny, they wouldn't respond to cubes, but these animals are so used to us. When they saw the ATV, they were sort of chilled out um, when we saw them around this neighborhood. They were, uh, they calmed down a little bit. I tried to get them with a the sack of feed and I couldn't do it but their behavior they didn't just keep running they kind of calmed down once they got in a corner in a tight spot and i just needed them to go one direction and we finally got them to go down the main road but the point of that is is things like the cubes you come out here you shake the sack they hear the atv they come running out of the woods um which is going to be interesting trying to find them all at, you know on this on this part of the property having them respond to the cubes is such a big deal. And I'm still working on a get, getting a cake feeder and a flatbed on my truck. So we'll have that too as well with the ATV. But them getting used to that 
uh, and cases where they get out or you need to rotate them pastures or you need to get them up to your corral system before you work them, having them respond to the cubes and to the ATV is, is a big thing. And, um, you know, kind of the worst nightmare of being a bison owner and rancher is when they get out, getting them back in. You hear so many horror stories about um, their bison getting out and them having to actually put them down. Uh, that's the worst case scenario. Um, so the creek crossing is a new thing to us. And we knew that existed there. We just didn't think they would go through it. And unfortunately they did. But good thing is, is we got them all back. We got them all safely back. And I'm proud of my bison for the way they responded. Um, they went out in the open. They chilled out once I kind of got there. And with the help of my buddy Cole, um, Marissa guiding traffic and creating a blockade, it worked out. Um, but I'm really proud of the way they handled themselves and not went crazy, basically, and ran all across Murray County. We're excited about something else. We've had some crazy stuff happen. I know. I know. But there's something big around the corner that we cannot wait to bring you. And I've been talking about this a long time. Been hinting to you for a long time about some changes that are coming to the Ponderosa. When I say changes, I mean big changes are coming. Uh, major challenges are about to bestow on us, for sure. And uh, we're going to have our hands full. Let's just say that. Hope you guys are ready for it because um, you're going to see something a whole lot more than you're used to. Anyways, thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys soon. Keep on bison ranching.